Lira, LIF, RIF, TFSA, RSP. Can it get a little bit more confusing how many acronyms we have here in Canada? However, I'm going to try and break down one of those accounts for you today. That's a locked in retirement account. And by the end of this video, you'll know whether you should leave it with your employer or take it with you and put it into a Lira. What's up, guys? For those of you who do not know me, my name is Philip Setter. I'm the founder and CEO of Affinity Life, where we've helped hundreds of Canadians find the right life insurance coverage at the right price, all from the comfort of their own home. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll put the link in the description below and you can check it out. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. OK, let's just kind of explain how pensions work here in Canada. So we have three main types of pensions. The first one is just individual pensions. So this could be uh, what's known as non registered accounts. That just means money that's in any other account that's not a registered account. This could be your RRSP. So your registered retirement savings plan. And by the way, I made another video on RRSP. If you're interested in that, just drop a comment below, say RRSP. And the other one is your TFSA that you could have. Again, I made another video. Drop a comment if you're interested in that. And that kind of comprises the bulk of your individual pension plans. And you create those yourself, obviously. The second one is the government pension plans. And this is CPP Canada Protection Plan or QPP Quebec Pension Plan. Um, and this is essentially a benefit that you pay into if you're working at a job. You know, they take it off your paycheck every month. And this goes into the Canada Protection Plan. And at a certain age, you can start withdrawing these funds. And it's a tiered structure. So you can take more and more and more as you get older. The other one is OAS, so Old Age Security. And this is another pension that you have available again at certain ages, you can start to withdraw those. And those are government sponsored plans. And now the third one, which is, of course, what we're going to talk about today is employer sponsored pension plans. And so EPP's employer pension plans, this is essentially now a combination of contributions from the employer, of course, and sometimes you as well. Now, this is a registered account with your employer, and it has similar different regulations as you know, an RSP or other registered accounts, and it usually grows tax deferred with in that account. Now, in most cases, when you're with the employer, you can't take any of this out until you reach a certain age. And of course, you stop working. However, the question comes up, well, if I leave my job, what should I do with this account? And you really have two options. You could leave it with your employer and they can manage it, or you could move it into what's known as a Lira, a locked in retirement account. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, a locked in retirement account is just the same as any other registered account. It does have some unique things that go along with it, but it operates very similar to an RRSP. The only difference is, is the access in it is totally different. But just like an RRSP, anything within that account grows tax deferred. And of course, when you take it out, it is taxed when you take it out, obviously. Now, there's three main reasons why you would even start a Lira, pardon me, in the first place. The first reason, of course, is again, if you leave a job, you have the option of then taking it with you and putting it into a Lira. The second reason why you may have a Lira is if you split with your partner, if you get a divorce from your partner and you have a settlement and part of that settlement is part of their employer pension, then of course you would receive those proceeds into again, this locked in retirement account. Now, the third reason that you might open up a Lira is if unfortunately your, your spouse passed away and they had some type of employer pension or they had a Lira in that case, then of course it could transfer over to you and it probably would transfer over to you in that case. So let's talk about actually how a Lira works. So a Lira, like I mentioned, is just another registered account. And now it's different than an RSP where an RSP you can continue to contribute into that account. With a Lira, you can't. There's no additional deposits that you can put into it. Whatever it is, that's what it's going to be. Now, again, everything grows tax deferred within this account and it's taxable upon withdrawal. However, the main benefit of a Lira is you still get to control the investments. And that's really the biggest thing. So if you leave your job and you have your employer sponsored pension plan, they're going to manage. OK, and they might be doing a really good job. They might be doing a really bad job. I don't know. OK, however, with a Lira, you now have control over both how the investments are managed which investments you're in. Are you high risk? Are you low risk? All of it is up to you. That's the main difference between keeping it at your employer and taking it as a Lira. Now, you can't withdraw anything into this account until you convert it into either a LIF, which is a life income fund or an annuity. So essentially, both those options are just tiered accounts where it starts to pay you out on a schedule for a determined amount of time. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. All it is, is essentially you transfer it into an account, whether that's a LIF, life income fund or an annuity, and that they say, OK, we're going to pay you out this amount every year for the next 20 years or the next 30 years. And it's just a prescribed rate for a set number of years. Now, a life income fund is very similar to a retirement income fund. And if you don't know what a RIF is, a RIF is essentially what your RRSP converts into upon 71. All this is, again, is that tiered schedule where it starts to pay out. Now, the life income fund is a little bit different. So it has minimums that you're required to take out, but it also has maximum. And that's the main difference between a life income fund 
fund and a retirement income fund. Now with that lift, just like a riff, and you gotta love all the acronyms we have here in Canada, as you get older, that percentage starts to increase. So you can start to take it at age 50 and there will be a minimum, whether that's two or three or 4%. As you get older, that minimum will start to increase. So you'll start to take more and more out of this fund as you get older. Now you don't have to take it out, of course, you can wait until you need it and then convert it. But once you convert it into a life income fund, that's when this tiered schedule starts and you do need to take those minimums each and every year. But let's talk about some other ways that you can take money out of this account because I have a lot of clients come to me and they say, okay, I left my job, I converted it into a Lira, I manage this now, I'm only 30 or 40 or 45. Is there any way that I can use this money during my lifetime right now? Like, do I have to wait till I'm 50? Do I have to convert it into a lift? Isn't there any way for me to get this money out? Yes, there is. Here's the thing. It's different from province to province. So you have to look up what the legislation is in your current province. However, I'm going to give you a couple examples of what you can do here in Alberta to take that out. So the first one is shortened life expectancy. So if you know you have some type of maybe illness, maybe cancer, maybe something else, and you know you don't have that long to live, you can actually unlock lock it right away and have access to it. The second one is if it's too small. So I don't actually 100% know the numbers, but if it's a smaller amount that they just say like, this isn't going to be enough for retirement, there's not enough time to actually have this grow into anything that's sustainable. You can actually just unlock it and they say, here you go. I don't know if that's like a pity thing. Maybe they say this is too small here. You can have it. But that's one of the options as well. Now, if you're 50 years or older, you can actually do a 50% unlocking. This is a one time only and you won't have access to it again. However, if you're 50 or older, you can say, yeah, it's 300 grand. You know what? Just give me 150. Let me use that right now. I need to buy something and you can do that. Also, if you become a non-resident of Canada, you have full access to it and you can just get it and go on your way because of course you're not going to be a resident within Canada anymore. So if you want to, you know, move and retire, I don't know, in the Cayman Islands or, you know, in the Bahamas, wherever you want to go, you can just get access to that as well. And one of the last things we'll talk about is financial hardship. So you can actually unlock it if you're going through tough times. And there's a number of different things which I'll go through here. So there's a bunch of different financial hardships that you can go through. And I'll read off my list here that you can get access to your Lira if you want to do that. And that's the case. So low income is one of them. If you can prove that you have low income, and again, it's different from province to province, you have to look it up. But if you have low income, you can get access to this. If you're going through a foreclosure, if the bank is foreclosing on your home, you can get access to this. If you are going through an eviction, whether you're obviously you're a renter or you're an owner, again, you can get access to this to help pay for those eviction fees and make sure that you don't get kicked out and you're not homeless in Canada. You can also use it to actually pay your first month security and rent if you're moving to a new place. And the last one that you can use it for is medical costs. So if you have some medical costs that you need to pay for, um, and again, it has to be eligible medical costs. But if you do have those, and again, look it up province to province, it's different. If you do have those, you can actually access your Lira and get those funds to pay for those costs. So in conclusion, should you open a Lira or should you keep it with your employer? Well, I would say nine times out of 10, it is actually probably the best idea to transfer it into a Lira for two reasons. Number one, you have a lot of different unlocking options that are available to you, such as I just mentioned. And if you need the money, it's there and you want to be able to at least have some capacity to take it. And number two, it gives you control over your investments. And I think this is the most important thing is, yeah, listen, I mean, they might be doing a great job. They might be doing a bad job. However, you have zero control over it. If you transfer it into a Lira, you can work with a number of different investment managers, or you can start your own account with something like Wealthsimple or Quest Trade or any of these other ones where you have control over it. And that's really the most important part is just, again, having control, having access to it. And I think that's super beneficial. So should you transfer it, pardon me, into a Lira? I think so. I hope this answered all your questions about about a locked in retirement account. If you guys have any more questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you guys are enjoying this content, all I ask is that you give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.